Hi, this is Rochelle with Journal Life's Journey, and I'm going to be making myself a mini art journal using 12 by 12 cardstock papers, pattern papers that I probably wouldn't use for anything else. So here I'm pulling out three 12 by 12 sheets with patterns that are not my favorite thing. <laughs> And I'm going to just be using them as regular cardstock. So I have these spray bottles from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack. They used to be a dollar. Now they're a dollar twenty-five. But I'm going to be using those to make my own acrylic sprays. I have this acrylic paint in tubes that I purchased from Five Below. You get 12 different colors. So I'm going to try those first to see how they are. I also have some other acrylic paint but I really want to put this to use since I bought it and I had not used it. So I'm using a few colors. I think I'm going to do purple, green, blue, yellow, and orange to make my sprays. And I'm just adding between four and six drops to begin with to the bottles and then I'm going to add a small amount of water like maybe a third of the size of the bottle with water. I'm not sure how many ounces these bottles are but they are pretty small. Maybe four ounces? I'm not sure. Uh, they may hold four ounces. No more than that though. And so yes I'm just squeezing some of the paint in and now I'm going to add water to each bottle. And what I do find is that these different colors of paint, the pigment is not equal. It depends on the color. The yellow actually has the least amount of pigment. Um, I would say that the purple, even though it looks blue on camera, it is purple. The purple, I think, had the strongest pigment of the ones that I used. The purple and the green. So yeah, I'm shaking up the paint, trying to make sure it's shaking well in each bottle. So these are the colors that I'm going to be working with. And I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper, put it in my spray box and test the colors. If you see what I mean there, you can barely see the yellow. Yellow was the first one that I sprayed. So I'm just testing to see if I have enough paint in the spray bottles. I don't, so I'm going to go back and add more paint. I want it to get to a color that can easily be seen even if I'm layering or whatever the case may be. I want it to be visible. So each one I'm going back adding more of that same color or a color that is similar. Trying to give the colors a little more pigment. So like I'm adding a little bit of the dark green to the light green. I also add a little dark blue to the light blue. So here I'm testing again. As you can see, the green shows up really well. The yellow is doing better. And then there is the orange. So I'm going ahead and taking the backside of that cardstock and starting the spraying process. On this first piece of cardstock, I am going to try and spray with all the colors that I'm using and keep them from getting muddy because some colors when they mix uh, like orange and purple will get muddy together, blue and yellow will get muddy together. So I'm trying to avoid the muddiness and keep those contrasting colors away from each other. So I'm not getting the colors that I want and I realize I'm gonna to have to add layers. So I dry a little bit, set it aside, and start on the next one. So for the next two, one of them I'm gonna do warm colors, which is the orange and the yellow, and then the other one will be the blues, greens, and purples. So this one, mostly orange and yellow. I do have some orange acrylic ink. Since my orange wasn't coming out 
with a lot of pigment I added a little of the orange acrylic ink and it did pump up the color quite a bit I like the way it turned out I know I'm going to have to layer so I am just spraying to fill the page and drying to come back and add a little bit more I also add a little of an orange uh, glimmer spray or tattered angels and I also added a little yellow acrylic paint that I had mixed up prior. So I sprayed again on the first sheet again trying to layer it up and get a little more vibrant color. This next sheet is the one that I'm going to do the cool colors. I have another glimmer spray that I wanted to use. It would not spray. So I just used a sprayer to sprinkle some of that color around and hopefully the sprays that I spray on top will spread those sprinkles out a little bit. So I'm adding the blue, the green, and the purple. And I'm lifting my box up so that I can hold the spray up straight instead of, hold it vertical instead of horizontal so I can get a better spray. And now as you can see, it's starting to look a little muddy. So I stopped and got a piece of paper to mop it up. That's what I was doing with the paper prior, is mopping up some of that excess paint or spray so that it doesn't keep mixing and I end up with a muddy color. Here I'm going back in on the warm sheet. I had some glimmer mist. I think it's a silver glimmer mist and I just used a sprayer to sprinkle some of that on. I'm going back to my original sheet again trying to keep it from getting muddy. Um, but still, I wanted all of the colors to show on this page. And I dry in between. And so these are the papers after I've done everything to them. All the spraying and glimmering and drying. This is what I got. And this is a great way to use up those paper pads with papers in them that you may not like very much just turn them over and use the other side just as if it was a plain piece of cardstock so here I'm going to go ahead and start building my little mini art journal this is comprised of several ideas it's kind of a one sheet wonder well it started out that way as a one sheet wonder project i think i saw something similar to this on 49 dragonflies and then annette castler i think that's her name she created a mini art journal that was kind of similar but i'm taking everything that i've seen and combining those methods to make my own so here I had scored at six inches on one side I turned it around 90 degrees and scored at four and eight that wasn't the right thing to do I should have scored at three six and nine so I'm going back in scoring at three six and nine so that will give me four panels on the 12 by 12 so I'm folding making sure everything is matched up those panels and burnishing my folds really well because once this paper is sprayed like this it gets really rough um, it changes the, t the texture a bit So yeah, I'm folding all of my score lines and burnishing out the score lines that I made in error.
And now this is where I'm trying to do the one page wonder trick where you just cut uh, on one side and then you kind of fold everything up and out to create a book like so if you see it's supposed to create pages and it does it works fine the only thing is this is pretty thick cardstock and once I've sprayed it and it changed the texture it makes it not want to fold the way I need it to and I want all of my edges to be even and it's just not working out it's not going to be even the way that I want it to be so I also measured it against the drink mix box because I'm thinking of using that box to make the cover for this. And I'm struggling trying to fold this so that my edges will meet up and it's just not working. So what I ended up doing was cutting it completely in half. And I'm also trimming off some of the height. I think I trimmed it down to four and three eighths eventually so that it will be the right height to work with the drink mix box. And then this is where I'm kind of combining the two methods to create my book block. So I'm just gonna have like an accordion piece that is the correct height for what I need. And I'm gonna trim all of my pieces to that height. And then I'm going to actually put them together. I'm going to use the one that I cut first as my guide instead of trying to measure just to make sure that I cut these right. I want them to be as equal in height as possible. <laughs> so I'm going to go through and do the remaining pages. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that in half at six inches and then cut off the excess, which I could have did this a different way and on the last sheet I figure it out how to do it a different way so I don't have such small pieces of uh, off cuts but I can use all of the off cuts so I'm okay with that they'll make great collage pieces so I'm trimming down the pieces from the warm sheet And these are the strips that I have left. And then this is where I figure, wait a minute, I can just mark to cut this in two places. And then I'll have a bigger off cut that I can use for something else. And I can also use that off cut for tags or whatever the case may be. So here I am trimming off the cool piece. So now I'm going in and scoring at three, six, and nine on each strip. So these are about 12 by four and three eighths. If you decide to do something like this, you would have to make sure that the height and width work for whatever you're using. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to put these pieces together. I'm folding and burnishing on all the scores, kind of making a W shape or an accordion shape. And initially I was thinking of having maybe three signatures, but because of the way I ended up doing this, I'm going to attach all six pieces together. So this is going to be also a no sew binding. So like I said, I am combining a multitude of different techniques to get to where I want to be. So here I'm gluing together the first two accordions or W's. So I'm putting the pattern paper back to back on the end pages and gluing those together. So 
So I'm and I'm trying to alternate them. So I'll have the multicolored one, the warm one, then a cool one, then multicolor, warm, cool, so that it's not exactly the same all the way through the book. You get a little variety. So again, I'm matching the end of one W to the end of another W and gluing the entire thing together or matching the pattern paper to pattern paper. So this is what I'm ending up with. It's not a complete accordion, but it has an accordion feel for now. Once I finish attaching all the pages, then I'm going to work on that accordion part because I don't want it to be an accordion. I'm going to turn those into pockets. So here I kind of slowed it down so you can see I am gluing together one pattern piece side to another pattern piece side to create the book. So this one, I'm gonna glue the pattern side to the pattern side of the end of the one that I just glued. Hopefully you can, me explaining this and you being able to see it helps it make sense. So I was just checking the drink box to make sure that the book block will fit and it does. So here I am on the accordion pages where they were still open. I'm sealing the side and the bottom together and then I'm using my circle punch to punch out a notch. That way I can add tags or journaling cards to those pockets. So if you see here anywhere where it was open and it was two pieces of pattern paper on the back side, I glued those together on the bottom and one side. and then punched to show that there is a pocket there. Here I'm just patching up. So again, I glued those together and I'm punching to open it up. So I'm just going back through burnishing, trimming off any places where the pattern paper is showing, even though I can go back through later with a paint marker or my distress ink and clean up the edges. I'm just trying to keep get them as clean as I possibly can, making sure everything is flowing properly. And now I'm going to go ahead and use some clips from Dollar Tree to hold everything together while it dries. And that's it. That is the book block. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful for using your stash, using your 12 by 12 papers, and making your own art journal pages. Thanks for watching and I'll holla at y'all next time. Bye.